Hey folks, it's Dag and welcome. So this is my uh, Banana Hobbies Aerofoam L39 assembly video. And folks, something happened when I was putting this together and bought it that never happened. I literally had people email me telling me this is going to burst into flames. It's a terrible airplane. And they just said it was a wreck. And I'm like, there's no way. So I've got to find out myself. But seriously, people said this is going to burst into flames because they have problems with the ESC. So let's dive into, uh, the box came pretty much unscathed. I had no problems with it. Uh, the airframe is pristine. I love it. The hardware package is awesome, except it came with twice, two sets of hardware packages. It did have a little bit of hang rash when I got it, folks. There was a dent on the nose. The canopy had a big crease in it. Um, and the fuselage had a crease on the side. These weren't from shipping, folks. This is the way it was in the box. Nothing came into contact with it okay um i did love the hardware that's on this plane i love the design the layout it's clean the hinges everything about this airplane is just really really clean folks it's a really quality kit uh or arf uh the manuals are garbage they're just absolutely where fun goes to die and um uh, I'll tell you, I'll explain to you why. And, and these are just my humble opinion, folks. I'm not tr throwing anybody under the bus, but I've been spoiled with like the Flex Innovation manuals. They are the best manuals uh, out there, along with the free wing manuals that come with like the Avante is absolutely clean. I mean, when you look at the difference between the two or three manuals I've got from those planes and look at this Aerofoam one, uh, th it's garbage. It really is garbage. And, um, and if you want to know how it's garbage, it's like misspellings. I mean, folks, just clear misspellings that just don't make any sense in this. Uh, this here says the retract and brake controller continue to evolve, so we're not going to spend much time. They don't spend any time on this. You don't even know what that little button on the left does, okay? So, um, oh, and also this sentence here is missing a, wor a word, okay? I mean, it's just completely missing a word. So I thought that was a little bit interesting. Um, and also, what's a PARS? You know, it says one uh, slide one wing into the PARS. I mean, it's supposed to be SPARS. And inside where the battery goes, folks, is a complete cluster. I mean, it is how you're supposed to put two batteries in here to be 12S and plug this thing in and make it fly. I have no idea. I would never fly a plane that's that much of a wreck. Um, I had, you know, several people say this thing's going to burst into flames. Well, if you go to the ESC manufacturer's website, they say don't exceed 150 millimeters on the leads to the battery. This came with 450 millimeters. Now, if you followed me and all my design folks, you know I've tested the crap out of stuff. It doesn't look like there's any extra capacitors from what's shown at the factory. Oh, another thing is this is an open plenum fuselage. If you got any FOD in this fuselage and rev it up, it's going to get sucked right into that fan. Okay, so, um, oh, and here's the ESC. I actually got an email saying you have to mount this over the cheater hole or it's going to catch on fire. And I'm just like, you know, give me a break. This, there's no way they're selling this kit if it's that bad. I don't believe that. But in paranoia, I decided to build a box to elevate the ESC to get it more into the flow of the air. And mounting it down low, I think, would be problematic. But uh, essentially, folks, I wanted to, and, and folks, if you followed me in all my 350 videos, you know I've experimented and tested and built my own planes. So getting that ESC up there, and I think, it, well, it works great. I've got nine flights on the plane already, okay? So look right there, you can see the ESCs and the flow, airflow through the air intake. I, You know, when I look at this inside, folks, one of the things that I wondered about was this right here, this voltage regulator. It comes and it's set on 7.4 volts on both sides, but everywhere in the manual says don't exceed 6 volts max to the servos. So I set the servo side of this back to 6 volts, the retract uh, side to uh, the 7.4. It also says on the website and all over the place you need 12 channels to fly this. That's not 100% accurate in my humble opinion because this little doohickey here, I think you can do it off 8, but I threw this away because I have a 12, I have an 18 channel radio. So now let's go back and dive into how I clean this up. This is what it looked like. This is what it looks like after I daemonized it, okay, or dagdomized it, or whatever you want to call it. I cleaned up, and this is pristine. It's kick-ass. Uh, the uh, leads to the ESC are less than 150 millimeters now. I've got nine flights on the plane. No bursting into flame. Nothing. The plane's absolutely kick-ass. 
Um, but folks, this is the way I would recommend you clean that up because a, a, any plane that's got a mess in it will lead to a problem. People crash airplanes and go, I don't know what it crashed. And you look inside it and the, it looks like an afro of wire in there. It's just a complete cluster. Okay. Um, now, this right here says you got to install these two plastic things on the fan. That's really confused me because it came with the fan installed. Why wouldn't it, whoever put the fan in this went ahead and added those two plastic fairing things? So let's talk about the airframe, folks. I love it. I absolutely love the look of this airplane. I love the finish on this airplane. It is just sexy. Oh, in the background there, you can see my MSL2, which is 181, 188 inch, I'm sorry, wingspan, um, 160 amp, 6,000 watt plane I designed and built myself. So I'm not a novice to this, folks, okay? Um, but this L39, folks, I love it. Okay, now look, the manual sucks, the way the radio uh, area, I mean, the battery area was laid out sucks. But overall, folks, I still give this like a 95 out of 100. Um, it's a beautiful airframe. But I'm going to talk to you about my test flights in a minute because those are got a little bit of a, I got a head scratcher on why this plane flies the way it does right now. So the uh, control surfaces I love, the hinges I love. The uh, servos sound strong and, and really, really top quality servos. I mean, for an R folks, this, this is a really nice airplane. It really is. So I don't want everybody to think I hate it because the manual sucks and the uh, way that the battery area was laid out, it really sucked. But, uh, oh, and, and the retracts, folks. I'm really impressed with how these retracts work. Um, they are... Uh, I mean, folks, this is a solid retract system. It really is. And it's got brakes um, and it has aerodynamic air brake, which I didn't really demonstrate in this video. Uh, I mean, this is a kick-ass kit or ARF as they call it. And they say it's PNP. It's not. Um, it might be plug and play if you want to completely redo the way all of the batteries mount in there and you want to redo... Uh, you know, me raising the ESC, but, uh, and you didn't have to do that. You could have left the ESC where it was and it probably would have been fine. But I did have people say these ESCs are exploding, um, or not exploding, burning, I think. And I got a picture sent to me of one of these sitting on the runway on fire. <laughs> but folks, um, I have nine flights on mine with zero issues and, uh, except some wonkiness in the flying. I don't understand. My first flight, my first two flights, I thought I was tail heavy. So I moved the uh, battery forward a centimeter. And now I needed like eight clicks of up elevator to fly level. It's very sensitive to the CG, at least for me. Another guy at the airfield who has the exact same airplane says he's never gotten his plane 100% trimmed out. He doesn't understand. Every time you fly it, it flies a little bit different. And um, folks, you know, he took his uh, ex external um, fuel tanks off his wings and said it made it fly a little bit better. So on my third and fourth flight, I set some uh, dual rates and lowered all the throws except the rudder by 30%. And the plane did become a little bit more docile. On the next two flights, I put a little bit exponential in there and the plane did become a little bit docile. But folks, I only have one or two airplanes that have stabilization in it. And this plane flies like one of my planes that have stabilization with it turned off. That little bit of a waddle, a little bit of a yaw waddle, and a little bit of a porpoise. Now, I did fly it dirty, really slow up high, uh, and it didn't have any bad habits when it stalled. It just mushed over. It just didn't roll on its back. I did slow flight with it clean. It didn't do anything unpredictable. So it's not a CG problem. Um, and, and a friend of mine's got the free wings version of the, the smaller of this, and he flies knife edge down the runway three feet off the ground like it's a pattern plane. So... I'm still going to get this figured out. I'm not sure why the plane waddles a little bit when it flies. What I mean by waddling is it, it yaws a little bit and it porpoises just a little bit. Like, you, like you're like you always trying to kind of find trim. And um, it's just weird. But hey, look, folks, please like, subscribe, and uh, follow my videos because there's going to be a lot more on this uh, L39. I'm going to try to fly it again this weekend and get a lot more video. I mean, I have no video of this plane flying right now because I don't have a video person that goes to the field with me. But I think this weekend I've got someone who's going to come and video uh, tape my test flights with this airplane. Oh, and the plane seems to have plenty of power. One person who reached out to me said it's really underpowered. To me, this plane seemed like it, it was adequate and it flew very scale. So that's it, folks. 
Please like and subscribe, rock on, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.